In this video, we're going to be looking at jack inhibitors and how that can improve hair growth. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. On this channel, we create tons of science-backed YouTube videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you are new here, consider subscribing. So guys, let's get into the video on jack inhibitors. New research from the last few years found that a class of drug called jack inhibitor has shown potential in addressing alopecia areata. Given that there are limited treatment options available for this form of hair loss, this may prove to be a game changer. In addition, there is evidence suggesting that other alopecia, including androgenetic alopecia and telogen effluvium, may also benefit from this class of drug. This article will briefly explore the mechanism behind jack inhibitors and review a few studies behind the drug. First things first guys, first things first, what is a jack inhibitor? Well, Janus kinase, or jack for short, is a group of enzymes comprised of jack 1, jack 2, jack 3 and tyrosine kinase 2 or TYK2. They are located within the cell but on receptors that are present on the cellular surface. When immune responses need to be coordinated in the body, Molecules called cytokines seek and bind to the cell receptors that activate JAK. With the help of other molecules, JAK transmits the instruction to the cell's nucleus where it is processed. The activation of JAK and its corresponding signaling pathways are necessary for host defenses and immunoregulation, such as the production of white blood cells and obstruction of viral replication to initiate. However, it can backfire in cases when it overreacts and causes unnecessary inflammation and immune responses. Janus kinase inhibitor, also known as JAK inhibitors or JAKinibs, is a class of medicine that blocks JAK from activating, thus disrupting the overactivation of immune cells. Currently, the two JAK inhibitor drugs have been approved by the FDA are called Ruxolitinib and Tofactinib. Ruxolitinib was approved in 2011 as an intervention drug for treating myelofibrosis, a rare form of cancer that compromises the bone marrow. Tofactinib uh, was approved in 2012 to treat patients with moderate to severe arthritis. Both are being tested in clinical trials for the treatment of plaque psoriasis and, you guessed it, alopecia areata. Now, JAK inhibitors as a possible drug for treating alopecia areata only started to gain traction in 2014 through a study by Dr. Brett King, a dermatologist and associate professor at Yale University. Dr. King was evaluating and managing the treatment of a 25-year-old male patient who had a severe form of plaque psoriasis that had begun five years earlier. In addition to psoriasis, the patient reported a history of alopecia areata. Uh, which started at the age of 2 and progressed to alopecia universalis at age 18. Based on prior research, Dr. King surmised that JAK inhibitors has myriad effects on T lymph lymphosomes and can therefore target both the plaque psoriasis and the alopecia universalis. The first two months of tofactinib at 5 mg twice daily showed some mild improvement in psoriasis with noticeable signs of partial regrowth on the scalp and face. The dose was then increased to 10 mg in the morning and 5 mg at night, a total of 15 mg daily. While the tofactinib provided substantial improvements to the plaque psoriasis, no one anticipated its dramatic response to the patient's hair. In only three months after the dose increase, there was complete regrowth of the scalp hair along with the regrowth of eyebrows, eyelashes, facial hair and axillary hair. A few months later, Cristiano and her team of researchers from Columbia University Medical Center also produced similar results in three male patients with alopecia areata. Like Dr. King's patients, each subject recovered a full bed of scalp hair within five months of the start of treatment. The phenomenal response from these two studies spurred headlines and piqued the interest of both the hair loss and biomedical community. More research has since been conducted, offering possible hypotheses on JAK inhibitors' ability to effectively target alopecia areata. First, JAK inhibitors can prevent and reverse alopecia areata. So AA is an autoimmune disease resulting from damage to the hair follicles by T cells. It is the third most common form of alopecia with over 6.6 .6 million people in the United States and 147 million people worldwide have or will develop alopecia areata at some point in their life. Of that group, approximately 20% of alopecia totalis or alopecia universalis. Normally, the immune system protects you from infection and illness by eliminating any foreign bodies that are not your own. This can include harmful bacteria, 
viruses and parasites. In alopecia areata, hair follicles from the scalp and other areas of the body are mistaken as foreign by their own immune system. The immune cells surround and attack the base of the follicle, causing it to shrink and become more fragile. Soon after, it will interrupt its own growth cycle by prematurely pushing developing anagen follicles into the catagen phase before transitioning into the telogen phase or resting phase. The underdeveloped hair will characteristically fall out in patches, leaving smooth, bald spots. As long as the hair follicles are still enduring attacks from the immune cells, the bold spots will be left in a dormant state and production of new anagen follicles will slow down drastically. If the condition is not addressed, it may manifest into alopecia totalis or alopecia universalis, where most or all form of hair growth has halted. Cristiano and her team from Columbia University, the same study that mentioned prior, postulated that several immune pathways activate a specific white blood cell. This T cell is responsible for the direct attacks on the follicles that lead to the beginning of alopecia areata. In this extensive study, which I will link for you in the description, Cristiano and fellow researchers showed that they can prevent the immune pathways from initiating through the use of JAK inhibitors. In addition, it can reverse the presence of alopecia areata and re-stimulate the follicles back to active antigen phase. To prepare the subjects, the researchers took the T-cells and recreated the conditions for alopecia areata on the skin of my subjects. Now, after a few weeks, the affected skin grafts with spontaneous alopecia areata were transferred onto the backs of healthy mice. Firstly, to test whether JAK inhibitors would be therapeutically effective in preventing alopecia areata, the researchers administered ruxolitinib and tofacitinib daily on two experimental groups along with a control group for 12 weeks. The results showed that mice on the JAK inhibitor drugs maintained the grafted hair, thus revealing the prevention from the development of alopecia areata and the expansion of these T-cells. Meanwhile, the control group lost a vast majority of grafted hair after a few months. Cristiano and her team then tested whether JAK inhibitor could reverse subjects that already have an onslaught of the disease. They took grafted mice that had developed extensive alopecia areata and experimented with daily application of both oral and topical application of the drug. After two weeks, while both application methods showed substantial hair growth and reduced the frequency of the T-cells in treated skin, all of which persisted two to three months after treatment stopped, the regrowth for the topical group was stronger and more evident than the oral group. Researchers were able to observe visible effects as early as two to four weeks after the onset of treatment. Within seven weeks, the mice exhibited full coats of hair and within 12 weeks, complete hair regrowth had emerged following the topical therapy. In addition, the team noted that untreated areas of the abdomen remained alopecic. They postulate that the topical therapy acted locally and the observed therapeutic effects were not the result of systemic absorption. Finally, to test JAK inhibitors' success on human subjects, Cristiano performed a clinical trial with three patients with moderate to severe alopecia areata. Each patient received 20 mg of oral ruxolitinib uh, taken twice daily for three to six months. As noted, all three patients achieved near complete hair regrowth within five months of treatment. In addition, the T cells, amongst other molecules that were previously harming the follicles, showed reduced presence on the scalps. Now, in the last study, Cristiano and her team were able to demonstrate that hair regrowth was due to, in part, the, the reduction of the T cells infiltration. However, during the course of the experiment, they were surprised by the unusually robust hair growth in the group that had received topical treatments of JAK inhibitor in comparison to the groups that received oral treatment. This suggested that there may be other variables at play. Thus, the researchers conducted a new study that focused on JAK inhibitor and its effects on hair growth cycle. From this, the researchers found several important findings. 1. JAK plays a direct role in influencing the hair follicle's growth cycle. Mice in late telogen phase, at 8.5 weeks, were placed into three groups. One group had a control vehicle and ruxolitinib applied separately on divided halves of the back. Another group was treated with control and tofacitinib with the same equal division on the back. The animals were only treated for five days total before withholding the drug. Within only 10 days of starting treatment, approximately 90% of the mice treated with both of the chemicals displayed skin darkening and hair growth, whereas no hair growth was evident on control treated mice. Within three weeks, the tofacitinib and ruxolitinib treated skins regrew their entire <gasps> fur back. Excuse me. In addition, the researchers treated mice skin intelligent phase with ruxolitinib, tofacitinib, or vehicle control and harvested the skin five hours after the first, second, and third treatments. 
They find EDU plus cells important for multiplying hair stem cells within the drug treated skin, but not for the control treated skin. These findings suggest that Jack normally acts to prevent transition to antigen by encouraging hair follicles to remain in a dormant state. The suppression of Jack signaling activates a pro-growth stroke anti-vesting signal during telogen, thus allowing for normal hair cycle progression. Hair inducing effects of Jack inhibition are did not dependent on the activity of T cells or lymphocytes. The hair follicle microenvironment contains a substantial population of resident and migrating T cell, many of which contributes to the maintenance of normal growth cycle. The researchers took two different types of immunodeficient mice models, lacking specific T cells and B cells, and examined whether it made a difference to normal hair growth after treatment with Jack inhibitors. The results showed that the missing white blood cells did not make a difference to the drug's response to the follicles, which continued to grow hair robustly. This suggests that the hair inducing effects of Jack inhibitors in normal skin are not dependent on the activity of T cells or lymphocytes. Rather, the vigorous growth of antigen follicles is likely due to an intrinsic property of the hair. Initially, this may sound conflicting to prior results, but Cristiano and her team surmised that when considering hair growth in alopecia areata patients, it is actually a two step mechanism. First, the immune attack led by the T cells must be eliminated, then the antigen growth must be re stimulated. With this study, they may have proven that Jack inhibitor just has the gift of being able to act on both steps independently. And 3. Jack inhibition may help other forms of hair loss. The key to this theory is based on the finding that the elements most directly related to hair growth, such as hair germ, follicular stem cells, and dermal papilla, can be activated directly through the obstruction of Jack. Many forms of alopecia are characterized by the inability of hair follicles to enter the antigen phase after long dormancy in the telogen phase, such as androgenetic alopecia. By stimulating these key elements, affected hair follicles stuck in telogen phase are given optimal opportunity to enter back into the growth cycle. However, experts are deeply divided including Dr. Brett King and urge many people to remain very skeptical of such bold assertion. Now, Based on current findings, Jack inhibitor is becoming a serious contender for addressing alopecia areata and may eventually help other forms of alopecia. However, interfering with the body's natural immune system can be dicey business. To no surprise, some serious side effects for oral Jack inhibitor drugs have been reported, and moreover it is expensive and a 5mg pill can cost over $67. While the cream likewise holds a hefty price tag, there is a chance that it may act on the local Jack in the scalp, thus reducing the risk of systemic side effects. As there are only premature promises, we recommend waiting for additional research on the drug safety and efficacy for treating alopecia areata before seriously committing. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you today on Jack Inhibitor. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.